In this video, I'm going to create a fine art architectural image. I'll take you along on a photo shoot and I'll show you how I process it in Photoshop. Well, with a lot of the leaves having fallen off the trees, I've shifted my focus this morning, literally, to uh, some architectural photography. I found a building in downtown Bridgeport, Connecticut, which I have driven by maybe hundreds of times on the highway, but never pulled off to shoot it. It's there in back of me, get a sense of it. And so I'm gonna try to capture a really cool shot of this building. Uh, let me go set up right now. some good shots here and I think I captured some streaking clouds as well. I want to get a little closer to the building and shoot sort of more straight up. Uh, I'm just a little concerned that security will see me and chase me away. But I'll take that chance. It's a Sunday morning. I'm hoping they won't but you never know. I'm using my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I'm going pretty wide. I'm going out to 16 millimeters. And as far as the technical settings, uh, I'm shooting at f11, ISO 100. I'm shooting in bulb mode, so I can go out past 30 seconds. Right now I'm going about 45 seconds. And I'm really capturing some of that nice cloud movement. Another part of the building that looked pretty interesting uh, when I was scouting it out. I'm going to walk down the street and see if I can get a shot of that part of the building. standing right beside uh, I-95. I thought it was a pretty cool uh, architectural piece of this building. I think I'd try to get a shot of it. building a bit. I think I got some good shots. Why don't we do this? Let's jump into my computer and I'll show you how I process one of these images in Photoshop. Okay, uh, on my computer now and this is the image I want to work with. Uh, I'm in uh, Photoshop. I've done a little bit of work in Lightroom already. Increased clarity a bit. Uh, brought up the shadows a tad but honestly didn't do too much. I think it's pretty good, but I think I can make it better. What I want to do is show you how I've turned this image uh, into this image, which I think, again, has more drama to it, more punch to it. Um, in Photoshop, there's a lot of ways of doing the same thing. 
And so if you have a different way of doing some of the stuff that I'm doing or a better way, uh, put a comment down below. That would be really helpful. Uh, I've already made a number of selections, uh, selected the sky, different parts of the building. To do that, I use the polygonal lasso tool. These are mostly straight lines uh, in this building. Even those curves really are a series of straight lines. So it was pretty easy to do. And I saved them simply by making the selection, going to select, hitting save selection, which is grayed out now. But uh, And then you can think of a name for it. So pretty easy. So I'm going to use some of those selections. I won't do every single thing, but you'll get a sense of really how I approach this. Now, one thing I wanted to do was feel as if the light was really coming from the right side of the image. Uh, the light really was not directional on the image. In fact, I think the sun was rising behind the building. Um, but I can play with it in Photoshop to create uh, some of that, some of that feel, directional light. Um, so what I first want to do is, uh, is play with the color a little bit. I could have made this a black and white, but I wanted to make a color and, and create more punch by using these colors a bit more effectively. And so first thing I'm going to do is maybe make that blue in the sky a little bit richer and, and deeper. And so what I'm going to do is use the camera raw filter, which is really the same thing as Lightroom. Um, and I am going to uh, choose this targeted adjustment tool. I'm in using saturation now. I'm going to pull up on the blue. And you see, obviously, that blue becomes a lot more saturated. I'm going to go too crazy, but definitely want to make that a little, a little punchier, a little uh, richer. Uh, I can hit OK. Um, the next thing I want to do is create a bit more contrast in the sky. And so I'm going to go up to my Select button, Load Selection. Uh, actually called it sky. I'll hit OK. You could see that selection. And I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer, which I'll be using out throughout this uh, demonstration. But just for contrast, you know, typical S curve. You want to pull down on the left side and pull up on the right. And you really get that, that really nice contrast. So here's the before, here's the after. Quite a bit more dramatic. Next thing I'm going to do is start to work on the building. And so this curved part of the building right in the middle is really a great feature of it. And I want to accentuate that more. And again, kind of show almost like the light coming in from the right side of the screen. And so I am going to load the selection. I call it center curve. And you'll see the selection show up. I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'm going to pull up really in the middle. So that's going to brighten up the entire selection uh, quite a bit. So here's the before, here's the after. But next thing I want to do is use a gradient tool. So I'm going to go and reselect it. I can go to select, reselect. I'm going to go down to my gradient tool. I want to make sure I have the linear gradient tool selected. I want the white to be the foreground because that's going to show up on this layer. I could just pull across from the left and you'll see that uh, the left side of the screen, the left side of the selection becomes brighter and the right side kind of goes back to where I was. And you can play with it. Uh, to keep it level, by the way, if you hit shift and drag across, it will, uh, it will remain fairly level. So here's the before, here's the after. To accentuate it more, uh, we can darken the right side. And so I can go to a Curves Adjustment layer. There's a new layer now. Pull down, and that will darken the entire selection. But then I can reselect, go to my Gradient tool. This time, pull across from the right. I'm going to hold that Shift button down to, uh, to make sure it's level. And now you can really see it. So here's the before. You know, not bad, but fairly flat. Here's the after, uh, quite a bit more dramatic. Um, on the left side of the image, there's this small panel that would be getting hit by the sun if, in fact, the sun was coming from the right or the light was coming from the right. And so let's uh, select that and brighten that up a little bit. Uh, I believe I called it left strip. You can see that selection. Again, choose a Curves Adjustment Layer. I can pull up. It's going to brighten up that selection. 
Uh, I want to create a little bit of movement here, a little bit of a gradient. And so once again, I can reselect, choose the gradient tool, pull down from the outside. And that's not exactly even. It's always tricky to get this exactly right, but something like that. And so here's the before, here's the after. I can deselect, by the way, by hitting Command D. Now, on the right side of the image, there's this kind of brownish, reddish portion of the building. I'd like to have that pop a little bit more. I'm going to do it two ways. First, let me select it. I'm going to choose, I think I called it uh, red, because it was the red part of the building, really brownish red. Um, but I want to first create some contrast here, have those windows pop more. And so I can choose a curves adjustment layer, pull up on the highlights and down on the shadows. And you'll see you have much more contrast in that selection. Those build those windows certainly do pop. There's the before, there's the after. The other thing I'd like to do, I can reselect is uh, make it a little bit more red, you know, add more color to it. And that's fairly easy. Let's just go to a solid color adjustment. Um, and we can pick, you know, a color we want. Uh, obviously you can play with it. Uh, that's a bit more orangey, but something, you know, a little bit red like that. Obviously that's not good, but let's change the blending mode to sort of uh, overlay or soft light. Yeah, soft light's good. It's probably a little bit too much, so I can reduce the opacity. If you go down to zero, this is what it was like, but you start pulling to the right, increasing the opacity, and you get, you know, at 70, 80%, you get a nice pop of color. So here's the before for this part of the building, before I added the contrast and the color. Here's the after. There were other things I did. Let me just highlight one thing I did with those poles down below. I really wanted them to pop a little bit more. And so uh, here's what I did. Uh, I'm gonna load a selection. I think I just numbered them. Let's take one of the poles, number three. You can see it's right in the middle. Uh, I'm gonna go up to a curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna brighten up the entire selection. That's gonna brighten up the entire pole. But this is a curved pole, right? So you're not going to get brightness in that way necessarily. Uh, I can reselect it, however. Let's go back to the gradient tool. This time I want to use a reflected gradient tool. And if I pull out, my foreground is white. If I pull out from the middle towards the outside, just the middle portion now of that selection is bright. Let me deselect it. And so there is the uh, before there's the after. And I did that with, um, you know, with all of those poles and that really helped me create, uh, you know, that nice definition of the poles, uh, and create drama there. So again, here's the after of the image. You can see those poles. You can see what I've done with a lot of the shading. Um, again, not, not really dramatic, but I think it does help the overall image. Hey, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Uh, and until next time, take care.